So I've prepared these two uh, stair modification molds for the rear deck of our catamaran and uh, I'm about to spray them up with white spray gel coat. Very important that you use actually spray grade gel coat. It is actually a lot thinner than a brush grade. If you try to spray brush gel coat, you're going to end up in a world of hurt as you block up your guns and, uh, and certainly the nozzles are not going to cope with brush gel coat. You would need to um, thin them out with some styrene. You wouldn't add acetone, you'd add styrene to break down typical polyester gel coat, uh, which is what I'm using here. So I thought I'd just discuss the use of HVLP guns. Now, high volume, low pressure guns. And I've basically had this guy here for, oh, I think probably around 10 years. It's a G860 2.5 millimeter nozzle and obviously HVLP gun. Now, they're pretty standard across the board. You can buy them just about anywhere, but this one from ES Manufacturing, I've actually got two of these, and this one here, I've been using for around about 10 years, and I've only probably ever broken it down once or twice, and what I'll do at the end of this video is I'll show you the process that I use to clean it. I picked it up from a guy on YouTube, but I failed to be able to remember his name, but one of the, the best uh, gun cleaning videos I've ever seen, I'm gonna reiterate that particular uh, process that he goes through every day to show you how I clean my gun. And once I learned how to do that, there was no more tearing the gun down, basically just lives like this, uh, completely put together without any tearing down at the end of the process. As long as you get to it before the stuff catalyzes, very, very important you go through this process. But I'm using this gun, I set it at around 60 PSI on the secondary regulator on my compressor. Now I have a system where I have a 100 litre uh, tank compressor, which is basically a silent drive compressor. I've shown you that before, I'll just show you a picture of it now. The initial uh, regulator is set at about 130 PSI and then my secondary regulator at 60 PSI, which gives me a lot of control spraying gel coat. I then run that through my refrigerator unit or my air dryer and that brings that humidity down and removes all the moisture every half of an hour or so. It flushes all the moisture out of the system and I use that implicitly with all my gel coat spraying. And then finally, it comes down the gun to yet another moisture trap because remember, every time you add a hose, you're going to increase the propensity for moisture to build up in your gel coat. The key is keeping moisture out of your gel coat. So it's a simple setup. You just plug the high pressure line in here, fill it up with catalyzed gel coat and spray it. I use, I have the fan pattern fully open to the full width. I back this guy back here almost all the way out and then I adjust this so that I get a really nice flow of air. And the important thing is that the gel coat comes out in a, in a reasonable fan pattern, but it's not like spray painting a car. You use a wet on wet technique, just like you would when you're spray painting a car. But the difference being, you're putting down a lot more material. And I'll do generally three passes over a mold like this to get the consistency and the thickness that I'm after uh, with gel coat. You don't wanna put it on too thick or you're gonna get cracking, or if you put it on too thin, obviously the styrene when you go to do the resin uh, part and the laminating is going to attack that gel coat and you'll end up with blistering and uh, and what we call alligatoring, which is that green tinge you end up through your gel coat. So the important thing is to set your gun up properly. So once again, I have the full fan open. I have this one back back and then the final air pressure pretty much around about halfway so that I end up with a decent fan pattern. Now that I have the gun hooked up, there's no obviously no gel coat in it yet, it's worth testing how much air you're getting out of the gun. And if I just pull the trigger, obviously you can see there's a little bit of pressure there. You can adjust that here. I can make it worse, make it a lot higher pressure. That's way too much. You're going to end up with gel coat all over your walls and everything. But I back up back a little bit to about where you hear it drop from a high force to a lower force. And that'll be about right. And this one here, obviously the fan, I open that right up. I want a good wide fan pattern. And then finally, the, uh, the, no the nozzle spring pressure, I back it right back to allow that nozzle to really come out and actually see it moving in and out. 
and allowing that gel coat to flow through. And obviously two and a half millimeters is a fairly big nozzle. If you're spraying a car, you'd probably be down to 0.8 of a millimeter. You know, so it's a wide um, resin stream that you're aiming for. And obviously gel coat is very, very thick. So the next, next test I'll do is I'll put my hand out at a distance here and I'll feel for where I, we commonly term it the wall, where you'll hear the pitch of the air pressure change, and that is around about the distance you want to be spraying your gel coat. So if you listen to it here, as I move it forward, there's the wall. And that would be around about 40 centimetres from the front of the gun. That very important fact is that I then need to spray consistently around 40 centimeters from the mold itself. You get closer, you're going to end up with it dispersing and end up with a lot of orange peeling. And certainly as you get it further away, you're gonna end up with it too thin. So once again, if you watch here, you'll hear it right there. At 40 centimeters, I've got the perfect wall of pressure. All those little bits of information I've just given you will allow you to set up your gun for a much better result when you're laying down your gel coat. Another very critical thing to remember too when you're spraying gel coat or using gel coat in general is it generally has around about a three month pot life. So don't go mucking around with stuff that's six or eight months old. It's certainly not worth it. I put the seal straight back on any resin tin that I open, just to make sure that the air is not getting to it, but certainly gel coat must be used within three to six months of its shelf life or, or its original uh, manufacture. And this is why I record all my batch numbers. And then what I do, I write on the lid, spray white, December 2021. It's now early January, so it's only just over a month old since I ordered it, and hopefully it was only a month old when I got it. So I'm still well within the confines of the, uh, of the chemistry there. And, uh, and I'll be using this to do the spray up. All right, that's now done. Let's get on to cleaning the gun. Okay, more importantly than the spray up and all the prep is how you look after your equipment at the end so it's ready for the next session. First things first, we've got some gel coat in here. We're gonna just let that crack and uh, let it go off and then I'll be able to crack that out of that container. So I won't waste acetone, it's very expensive. Don't want to waste it on that itself. I'll be able to crack that out, that's no problem. I have two cups, half full of acetone, ready for the gun cleanup. Now, the gun itself, very importantly, a couple of things I need to show you here. This cup here still has white gel coat in it. But I want to show you something very, very important. It's important when you're spraying that you don't ever tip it to the point that your breather you can see it there, is immersed in the gel coat. If you do that and block the airflow, you're gonna have a very ordinary spray up. So see how that is clear? I never ever tip it more than 45 degrees or to, a, to a vertical. And the reason why I do that is so as not to block up that, uh, 
that breather valve. So the next thing you do is basically you've got, you've still got some gel coat in here as you can see, there's a little bit of gel coat in the cup. First thing you're going to do is get some acetone, fill it about, I don't know, a third full, and just let that slosh around in there a little bit. Put the lid back on. Let it sort of work its way through the gel coat. Remember, we're going to clean this out. We're going to clean this out in stages, not immediately. Now, very important, you wear a mask and uh, an eyewear while you do this. So, get your brush and give it a good clean out. And that'll get rid of the bulk of anything that's starting to set in there. And there's already gel coat starting to set inside that cup. The next thing you do with that is tip it out. And put some more clean acetone in. Now at this stage, it's very important that you don't just press the trigger because if you press the trigger, this is going to come flying out of it. What do I do? is I leave the brush in the pot and then what I'll do is I'll spray it lightly into an, a container like a cardboard box or a bucket making sure that I'm protecting my eyes when I do it you can see the acetone starting to come out there but it's not flying out the top because I've got a brush in the top we are continuing to clean with the brush Make sure the vessel is totally free of any coagulated gel coat or, or anything. And this is why it's so important to do it straight away, as soon as you finish spraying. And once again, we'll tip that out. Now we're starting to see a very clear bore here. The next part is to make sure that the actual gun stays clean. So we'll continue to add more clean acetone. And this works every time, without fail. The other option you can do too is to lower your pressure and gurgle it. But I find that this works better because you're not mucking around with your pressure on your gun. I'm ready to spray again in about 10 minutes. So once again, we're cleaning out and we're spraying. And not only is this cleaning the, the, the vessel, it's cleaning out the nozzle and the inside of the gun as well. And while you're there, you can then get your, your brush and start cleaning. Careful. <laughs> So after about three or four flushes with that brush in place, we still haven't dismantled the gun, but we can certainly feel that the cleanliness of it is, is paramount. That's just pure acetone. Now what I'll do to store this now is I'll simply leave some clean acetone in it with the lid on and just leave that in its stand. The only problem is that this will allow it to breathe. So it's a good idea to tape up or block up this hole and you won't end up with evaporation, but storing it with a bit of acetone in it will always keep it nice and clean and ready for use on your next go. Thanks for joining me guys, let's get into it.